Welcome back to the Pink Floyd Collectors YouTube channel. Here is our monthly news recap for the month of January 2023. Welcome to the new year, everybody. Pink Floyd have now officially announced the Dark Side of the Moon 50th anniversary box set. The new box, set at $300, includes a Dolby Atmos mix, as we revealed last month. There's also the Live at Wembley 1974 on vinyl for the first time. Dark Side of the Moon has been newly remastered, also for this release. In total, the box will contain nine different discs, two CDs, two vinyl LPs, two Blu-rays and two 7-inch singles. The 7-inch singles being Money, backed with Any Colour You Like, and Us and Them, backed with Time. These are based off the original USA releases back in 1973. Also included in the set is the 160-page book curated by photographer Jill Fomanovsky and art directed by Hypnosis co-founder Aubrey Powell. There's also a music book of the album and a replica EMI pamphlet. Also included is the invite to the February 1973 preview, which was held at the London Planetarium on Baker Street in London. In terms of standalone issues, it appears that the 1974 live album will be available on its own and also the book is available to purchase separately. So far, no details have been given in terms of being able to purchase the new remastered vinyl album. So at present, that's only available in this box set exclusively. There are a couple of events around the release which are worth noting. Aubrey Powell has launched something called Project Planetarium. It's 100 planetariums around the world, which will put on a special show featuring the Dark Side of the Moon album. They've also launched at PinkFloyd.com an animation contest, which will run until the end of November, where they're inviting animators around the world to contribute an animated story or film around one of the tracks from the Dark Side of the Moon, or indeed multiple tracks. I will put links on the video description here to help you enter and also follow up on the Planetarium releases. In anticipation of the release, Pink Floyd have uploaded to various music streaming sites a single of Brain Damage. The set is available to pre-order on websites and will be available in shops on March the 24th. So an exclusive set, something we've been looking forward to. Whether it ticks all our boxes is up for a debate, but it is what it is. This is what we're getting. Confirmation that Roger Waters amused to death the analog produced vinyl 4 LP at 180 grams on 45 RPM has now been released in America and on the 21st of January will be released in Europe. This is something we've eagerly been anticipating for over three years now. Early reports I'm hearing is it's the best sounding version of the album. Obviously, the frustration is that it's only really one or two tracks per side. So you do have to get up, turn it over, get up, turn it over. But apart from that, the sound quality is the highest it's been and it's a quality pressing uh, that audiophiles certainly will be keen to have in their collection. Sadly, we have to report two deaths in the month of January, the passing of both Jeff Beck and David Crosby. Jeff Beck had, of course, appeared on Roger Waters' album Amused to Death and was known to be a good friend of David Gilmour, appearing at summer parties and appearing on stage with him. David Crosby Features on the album On an Island, released by David Gilmore back in 2006. David also toured with David Gilmore. And again, another huge loss for rock and roll. May they both rest in peace and thank you for everything you gave us over the years. During the month, it was announced that Stephen Wilson, a renowned producer and solo artist, has been looking at mixing Richard Wright's Wet Dream and David Gilmore's first solo album, David Gilmore, into 5.1 mixes. This is something he's done for other artists and has actually built up a very strong reputation for doing a good job. From what we understand, the Richard Wright release Wet Dream has been given the green light and will get released hopefully this year, if not early next year. David Gilmour has red-lighted the release and doesn't seem keen to proceed with it at the moment. Ian Barrett. Sid Barrett's nephew and the person responsible for all these Sid Barrett social media channels has given an update on the film Have You Got It Yet? The Story of Sid Barrett and Pink Floyd. 
He's posted in a Sid Barrett group on Facebook called Birdie Hop. And to quote him, he said, can you please reassure birdies waiting on the Sid documentary that it will be out this summer? I cannot give an exact date, but it will be very soon. So an update there from Ian. Lee Harris, the guitarist from The Saucer Full of Secrets, Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets, that is, has contributed to Sid Barrett's website. January the 6th was, of course, Sid's birthday. What he's done is he's looked at the song Here I Go and he's actually managed to pull on the resources of David Gilmour, amongst others, to really find out some details around the original recording and it's quite revealing. I definitely recommend reading it. That's over at SidBarrett.com. Lee will also be appearing at this year's The Guitar Show, which is held in Birmingham, England. He's advised that he's going to be there at the 4P FX booth, where he'll be putting the Scarlet Tunic pedal through its paces, so showing exactly what it can do. He's going to be there around 1pm. So certainly if you're in the UK, around the Midlands area, check that out on February the 26th. We still await an update for Nick Mason and the Saucer Full of Secrets. We do understand that there are more live shows coming. We just need details around the full tour and what it will involve in which countries. The Gerald Scarf book, The Art of Pink Floyd the Wall, has now got a North American release date. It's going to be available from March the 21st, 2023. It was, of course, released back in Europe at the end of 2021. The list price is 200 US dollars. I have noticed it's slightly cheaper on Amazon.com, so I would certainly point you in that direction. We have reviewed this book. If you go to our YouTube channel at Pink Floyd Collectors, we do a bit of a deep dive and have a look at exactly what you get for your $200. I'll include a link in the video description here. The Pink Floyd exhibition, Their Mortal Remains, currently on in Montreal, Canada, has once again had its close date extended. So it will now close on March the 5th, 2023. Ticket sales remaining strong there. There are rumours that its next stop will be in New York City. But that's something that's yet to be confirmed. And of course, as soon as we do have any confirmation or hear exactly where it is going next, we will let you know. On the 18th of January, Aubrey Powell flew over to the Netherlands to launch the Art of Hypnosis at the Groningen Museum. This is an exhibition that really curates the whole history of hypnosis, coinciding, of course, with Mark Blake's book. It certainly sounds like it's something worth visiting if you're in the Netherlands. We've had early reports from both the premiere and people who have visited since. And it's basically some original artwork that's been donated by Aubrey and the hypnosis team. So certainly if you're interested in the history of hypnosis, not only from a Pink Floyd angle, but also they're covering Led Zeppelin, Paul McCartney, of course, as well. That does lead us on nicely to an exclusive chat we had with Mark Blake regarding his release next month, Us and Them, The Authorised Story of Hypnosis. It's going to drop in shops on the February the 2nd. You can pre-order it now. It's an authorised look at the history of hypnosis. He's spoken to all members of Pink Floyd. He's spoken to Peter Gabriel. Uh, it's quite a revealing interview. It's over at our YouTube channel. Just search Pink Floyd Collectors within YouTube and you should get to our channel there. Pink Floyd Bassist rock and tour and member of the Nick Mason and the Saucer Full of Secrets, Guy Pratt has had his bass, affectionately known as Betsy, which is a 1964 jazz bass. This has been recreated by the team over at the Bass Centre in London. Well, just outside London. It comes in a choice of two colours, burgundy mist and black. The burgundy mist is actually the pink one that he's generally seen on stage with. The retail price for the guitar is £645. That's inclusive of tax in the UK. The worldwide price is £537.50. More details can be found over at basscenter.com. Brain Damage, the definitive Pink Floyd radio show, have uploaded a new podcast titled Getting Old. It's a look at songs both Pink Floyd and Solo Ventures that have used the topic of age. The radio show is now in its 18th year and Matt continues to do a fantastic job offering the Floyd community a fantastic service. Check it out at floydpodcast.com.
That concludes our monthly recap for Pink Floyd related news. Consider giving the video a like and subscribe to our channel.